replication is also specified on the U properties for replicating variables. However, you cannot just change the U properties. You must override a virtual method. So I have a snippet for it for UE lifetime. So what this does is it overrides a virtual method from a parent class. It's called get lifetime replicated properties, and it passes in an array of lifetime properties. And if we create a body for that function, we call the super. And now what we need to do is specify which variables are replicated here in addition to their U properties. So for example, we could say U property, and that would be replicated. And this is just a variable that is replicated from server. And this is the old way of doing it. So we're going to replicate this variable. What we have to do over here is flag it to be replicated. And the old and easier way is the do rep lifetime to the class name and then the variable name. Now, whenever this value changes, the engine will detect that it was changed and it will send it from the server to the client. Replication only goes from the server, but it doesn't go from the client to the server. So I'm going to drill that point in with from server being in the name. But this is the old way of doing it, and it is easier because you don't have to flag the variables being dirty, but it's less performant. Um, before we move on to the new way, there's also a way to get a callback when your property replicates. So we can do your property. We'll say replicated using, and then we'll specify a function name. I'll call it on rep replicated old variable. Generally, you name this the same as the property, so let's give it a name. So rep using, and it is the old way. Now we don't actually have that callback function, so we need to write it. So I'll say void with the function name, and there's our function body. But the thing to note is that this needs to be a U function. And also that we must set it to be a replicated property in the get lifetime replicated properties. So I'll copy and paste that one. And I'll change the name to being rep using. And now I'll compile this to make sure we're good. So we got some compile errors. I'll try including the header for the do rep lifetime macro. And I have a typo in my variable name. Try again. And we successfully compiled. But since those properties are not marked up with edit default only or anything, we can't see them here. However, they are in code and we can set them in code. And if these variables are set on the server, it will automatically replicate it down to your clients. For clarity, we can just throw the edit anywhere keyword on this and recompile. And now we should be able to change the value, but the replication only happens when it changes at runtime. So if you change the default, then when the act responds into the level, it'll just have the new default. And if you change it, then it'll detect it and it'll replicate it from the server to the client, but not the other way around. So the new way of replicating is very similar, but you have to mark variables dirty for them to replicate. So for example, I'll just paste this code here. And we have this replicate from server new way. And we can also do on reps. So if I paste this variable here, and the on rep is on rep test on rep new way. And so we'll make that on rep. So now we have a callback that will be called. Now, so far, there's nothing different with the new way of doing it and with the old way. Where it starts to get different is where we add the lifetime replicated props. So instead of doing that do rep lifetime macro, we will create a struct that flags these properties as being the new replication mode, which is called push replication. So we'll do f do rep lifetime params, and they're shared params because they will be used for multiple variables. So we declare that struct, and then we will set the property on shared params that it is push replication based to true. And then we need to use a macro to flag our variables that are replicated. So that macro is do rep lifetime, but it says with params fast. And so then what we can do is just say the class name, property basics, the variable name, and then we'll pass the shared params as the final argument to the macro. And we'll do the same thing for our other variable, which is the one with the own rep. Now, if these values change on the server, they won't replicate by default. What you have to do is mark them dirty. So for example, let's create a setter. So we'll say void set 
So it's push replicated variable. And then if we give that a body, inside of that body, we will say that the variable is now equal to the new value. And for good practice, we'll make sure that the replicated value doesn't equal the new value. So if it doesn't equal the new value, set it. And then we need to mark property dirty from name. So we give it the class name first. Then we give it the variable name. And then we tell it the object that is replicating. So that's this object. Now, if we try to compile this, you will actually get a linker error. Well, first we get an include error, actually. So let's make sure we include our headers. So I'm going to include from that macro, and I'm going to include from the push parameters. I believe that's good. So let's build. Make sure to save all your headers. Make sure to include semicolons. And so now it compiled, but there's a linker error. Link 2019, unresolved, simple, mark property dirty. And the reason is that this function needs to be called, but it's in a module that our game is not set up to use. And so we just need to make sure that we use the net core module with our project, and then we can link against this function and call it. That function is called internally to one of these macros. The way to do that is to open up your project name .cs. That is under the source, and then open up the folder with your project name. And then it should be in that folder, the build.cs. So target.cs is something else. What you want to change is the build.cs. So if you have the build.cs under the public dependency module names, what we can do is add the net core. So after adding that, if we try to compile, we successfully compile and link, allowing you to use the new fast replication model. So just to reiterate, the reason this variable replicates is because we marked it dirty. So if you just were to set this variable to a new value on the server without marking it dirty, you would not get replication. It would not happen. The client would not see the variable. So you have to call this to make sure it shows up on the client. That makes this a little more precarious and subject to breaking. You just have to remember to mark the property dirty. The way I do that is by having a set function that always sets it dirty when the value changes. Or if you need to get it in a mutable way, what you can do is mark it dirty every time that you get the variable. Um, to ensure that it never gets changed and not marked dirty. Though that's a little bit more expensive to do it that way in terms of performance. All right, let's just do a quick test to show that these replicated variables actually work. So what we'll need to do is in the constructor, flag the actor for replication. So we've made a constructor. And we'll set B replicates to true. And then we need something to actually change the variables. So what we'll do is in begin play, we'll start a timer. And after some amount of time, we'll change the variable, but only on the server. And then we'll get a callback on the client when it gets replicated. So real quickly, we will override the begin play. And then in begin play, we will set a timer. So, but only if it's the server. So we'll check if it's the server first by checking for authority and assuming we are in a dedicated server environment. Then we'll get the world and start a timer. Set the delay to maybe five seconds. And it will not loop. And then what we will do is set our replicated variables. So the we'll just do the ones that have onreps. So this onrep one, we'll just add one to it. Now that one should automatically replicate, but the other one is the push replication model. So we have to mark it dirty. So what we will do is call the function set push replicated variable. And I'll just grab the value and add one to it again. Actually, this one does not have an onrep, so let's just add a quick onrep for it. And then when it replicates, let's print it. And 
And then on the on route for the old way, let's also print that. So now let's compile and fix any compilers that we have. We need to include the Kismet library. Compile that. And so now it compiled. This actor is the one in the level. What we want to do is make sure we are running on network settings. So we're not going to do standalone. We're going to play as client. So it will launch a client for us and launch a dedicated server. And now what we will do is we'll drop breakpoints. So we'll do a breakpoint and begin play, which we should hit two of them, one for the client, one for the server. And in our on reps, we will also set breakpoints here. And so we'll see if these replicate. Ah, while we had changed the value in code, it had saved our blueprints value, so let's just revert that. Oh, I forgot to set up the on rep, so instead of replicated, that will be replicated using. And then the name of the function, which is the on rep, replicated from server new way. So if we save that, stop pi, and recompile. All right, now with all of the issues fixed, you can see if I play, I hit the begin play on the server. So this string, Unreal Editor, Engine, G Play, and Editor context string, dedicated server tells us, or you can just watch the role and see that it's role authority. So we've ran this, and since it's a server, it's going to step into here, it's going to create a timer, and then we're going to continue, and we'll hit the begin play for the client. So you can see the string changed the client, role simulated proxy, and so it skipped and never set the timer. So the timer only runs on the server. And now we're waiting on the server to hit that timer. So the timer just hit. So inside the timer, we're updating a variable that is replicated using the old method. And then we're going to update the variable that's replicated using the push method inside of this function. So if we step into there, you can see that if the variable is not equal to the new value, then we go in, we update the variable, and this is all happening on the server, dedicated server. And then we'll mark the property dirty. And so that'll tell the server that it needs to send it to all clients. And so we have the breakpoints set in our own reps which will be called on the client once that variable makes it to the client. So if I continue, we have the on rep for the old way of replicating. So you can see the value is now replicated from using rep using old way is two, whereas the default was one, old way one. And it's gonna print that to the string. And if I continue, we should hit the on rep for the push replication model. And so we hit this breakpoint now. So we are now in the on rep callback for the variable that is replicated using the new push replication. And we can see the value is one, whereas the default that we had set was zero. And so there you have it. Replication is working in code. And you can see that uh, those print strings actually worked too. And that's about it for basic new property replication. We will continue exploring the basics of view properties in a follow-up video.